Good afternoon. My name is James Vacker, and I'm chair of the Committee on Technology, and we're here today to vote on proposed intro 951A, a bill sponsored by Councilmember Liz Crowley that would require certain phones in public spaces to have direct access to 911 service. On December 1, 2013, Carrie Renee Hunt Dunn was repeatedly stabbed by her estranged husband in a Texas motel room. Their young daughter, witnessing the crime, attempted to dial 911, as most school-age children who are taught that would do. However, the motel required all external calls to dial an additional nine before dialing out. Unaware of the, de of the need to dial nine, the young daughter could not reach emergency services. Ms. Hunt died from the fatal stab wounds. This crime inspired several states around the country to adopt some form of Carrie's Law in honor of the late mother, and we are proud to count New York City among these jurisdictions. 951A would require that businesses and city agencies that have multiple telephone systems accessible to the public, like phones in hotels and motels that generally require an extension to make external calls, be configured to directly dial 911 without first dialing 9 or any other prefix. Their new phones must also be able to directly dial 911. In addition, emergency services personnel often receive no indication of exactly where a call to them is made if someone is placing the call from a multi-line telephone system. The local law would require phones to provide precise location information. Fortunately, these two configurations have minimal cost as many manufacturers were already making these phone updates in light of a similar law passing the House of Representatives in Congress. Even those who may be familiar with dialing prefixes for external telephone calls may fail to do so in times of emergency, when stress is high and time is limited. We believe this law can save lives, and New York City's version of Carrie's law will be one of the most robust in the country. I want to introduce my colleagues we here, Councilmember Barry Grenchik and Councilmember David Greenfield, and the sponsor of this bill, Con Councilwoman Liz Crowley, is also here, and I'd like to call on her for several remarks. Thank you, Chair Vaca. Thank you for bringing this proposed intro 951A to a vote this afternoon. I thank all my colleagues who have co-sponsored this legislation as well. I introduced this bill after a tragic incident in which a woman was killed. In 2013, a woman named Carrie Hunt was the victim of a murder, and her nine-year-old daughter was present at the time attempted to call 911, but with no avail. She was unable to get through because she did not know that she had to dial 9 to get an outside line. In response to this tragedy, legislation known as Carrie's Law has been enacted in several jurisdictions, including Texas requiring that businesses with multi-line telephone systems provide direct access to 911 service. Direct access means that you do not have to dial an initial number, digit, prefix, or other access number or code before dialing 911. Patro proposed intro 951A requires businesses and city agencies with multi-line phone systems to configure them to provide direct access to 911. This law would also require that the telephone systems be configured to provide notification of a central location for which the emergency personnel can respond to 911 calls. Doing so will serve to prevent tragic circumstances that took place in Texas and will also help to minimize any delays in contacting emergency services. I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Without further ado, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. I recommend a yes vote. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on technology. Introduction 951A, Chair Vaca. Votes aye. Greenfield. Thank you, may I explain my vote? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you for your leadership. I want to congratulate Councilmember Crowley on a wonderful common sense bill, and I vote aye. Grenchik. Aye. By vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, item has been adopted by the committee. Thank you. The time is now approximately 2.40 p.m., and this, he this meeting of the Technology Committee of the City Council is hereby adjourned.